If you're a young artist or music professional, there is a good chance that you're planning to attend a conference or festival at some point in 2022. And if that's true, then this video is for you. Hello again, everyone. My name is James Shotwell, and this is the Music Biz Channel. Welcome back. I'm so glad to have you here. And today, I want to talk about conferences and festivals. Now, I have lots of opinions on these things, but let's be honest people are going to go to them. Most music conferences are geared at young musicians, especially those that have some disposable income. And there are a lot of festivals that have conference components, such as South by Southwest, that tend to draw a lot of musicians and aspiring professionals as well. Now, these things cost a lot of money and can be a ton of fun, but if you're not careful, they can also be a waste of time. So today, we're gonna go over the questions you need to ask yourself before attending one of these events. So the first thing you need to ask yourself before attending a conference or a festival is how am I getting there and what is my budget? And I know that may seem obvious, but let me give you a reason why. I know a lot of musicians who will book the thing and then figure it out later. But when it comes to events, especially the larger scale ones that have multiple rooms or multiple buildings and are spread out over several days, it's very easy to spend a ton of money and get nothing back in return. So we need to plan everything down to the last dime or at least as closely as possible. And that begins with how are we getting to this place? Where are we staying? Is there a way that we could save money? Maybe by staying with fans or staying with friends friends, or maybe we combine with other people that are going, how we can get there. And once we're there, what is our budget on site? You know, what is the food situation? Are they feeding us at this event? Do we have to go out into the world for food? Can we cook at the place that we're staying? All of these things need to be figured out because as an artist or an aspiring professional, every penny counts. You don't have a ton of money to be burning on something that doesn't work out. So when it comes to the extras of a thing like a festival or a conference, you know, eating and getting bottles of water throughout the day, these are things that we need to budget for and be prepared for. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves on site worrying more about our money and our spending than what we're we're getting out of the event and that's not something you want to run into. Speaking of planning, we also need to know what we're going to do promotion wise. So again, a very common example is that artists pay for a music conference, they go there with their music and some business cards and they just hope that they meet somebody. They hope that they talk to somebody that's speaking on a panel, they give them a business card and it changes everything or maybe they leave a promo somewhere and somebody picks it up. I don't know what the plan is. All I know is that this approach doesn't really work out. You need to be specific. Just like when you're trying to plan goals to achieve throughout the year, a conference and a festival should have its own list of goals and its own approaches to how you're going to pull these things off. So we're talking about promotion. We need to decide what it is that we're hoping to get out of this event. Do you wanna get more gigs? Do you wanna get more fans? Do you wanna get further along in your career? Do you wanna get a record deal? When you can answer that question, you can begin to build a plan to figure out how you're going to get there. So for example, if you wanna be on a record label's radar, then maybe you can look at the conference or festival website, figure out everybody that's representing a label who will be there. The next thing I would do from there is go to LinkedIn, figure out what all those people look like and kind of make a mental note, study them, get used to them. That way when you're on site, you can locate those people and be prepared to talk to them. Not in a generic way where it's like, what's your name or who are you? You're gonna to come to them prepared. You're gonna know who they are, what they do, and you're gonna have a pitch for them. You're gonna be like, hi, John from YouTube. My name is James and I have this band with this new video. I would love for you to watch it. I don't know if that would do anything for you, but at least you won't be wasting their time and you'll come looking professional and prepared. And that's what we're looking for. And if your goal is to make more fans, then you really need to think about how you're going to budget it and what you're going to do. Because if there's a lot of artists going there, you have to assume that most of them are going to be doing the same thing. That means putting up flyers, handing out CDs, handing out business cards. So if you're going to do all those things, which is basically the essentials, what else are you going to do? What can you do to stand out? What's going to make me say your music or your personality or your whatever it is, your presence is somehow more deserving of my time and attention than anything else. Because when you're trying to talk to the celebrities that are at these things, and when I say celebrities, I mean panelists or industry, people in a position of influence. You gotta remember that everybody's trying to get their attention. So how are you gonna stand out? Next, are we looking for quantity or quality in this experience? So as an example, quantity would be attending every single panel possible, going to all the shows and maximizing the value of the dollar that we spent on it. Versus quality. I'm only going to go to panels that make sense for me or that feature panelists who I want to speak with and have a relationship with. And when it comes to performances, while there are some artists that I would really like to see, there are other artists who would be better for me to see and meet because maybe we could network together, maybe they're a peer, maybe there's an opportunity to tour. So maybe you don't go see your favorite band, but you see the band that makes more sense for your career and where you're at right now. You start building those pathways. See, again, 
the temptation and the allure of these conferences and festivals is that there's so much to do and so many opportunities. But if you don't make a clear plan in advance, you're going to end up scrambling on site, not getting anything done, and not really remembering anything of what you learn. Next, this brings us back to something that we talked about a moment ago, and that is what are you doing to promote your presence at this event right now? So let's say that you're going to South by Southwest in March, or maybe you're going to the CD Baby DIY Musician Conference in August. If you know you're going, you've bought tickets, you've already planned this thing out, there is no reason why you can't start teasing your presence there. I mean, you can tell your fans, for example, that you're gonna be on site there, because maybe you have fans where the conference is who will buy a ticket or see if they can get into the gig part of it at least to come out and see you. Or maybe your goal, again, is to get that record label. So the thing you're doing to promote yourself right now is the research element, figuring out who at the conference you wanna get in front of, figuring out how you can best introduce yourself and get your music to them. Or if you're going to be performing at an event and you're trying to get the industry's attention, something similar can be done. You can start looking into who's going and pitching them emails. You can just begin promoting yourself online. Maybe you come up with something that I haven't even thought of yet. But the point being, if you're not promoting yourself until you're on site, you're already behind a good portion of the people who were there. And again, you're going to end up wasting money and wasting time. If you're going somewhere and you spent the money, start working on your plan and start taking action right now. Finally, just for the sake of not regretting your decision, I want you to make a list of your goals. Now, I know that I've mentioned goals throughout this video, but I mean a literal list. I want you to open your phone's notes app right now, pull out a piece of paper, give me three things that you want to accomplish and make all three of them very reasonable. So for example, I want to hand out 20 business cards. I want to get at least 10 email addresses from people that I network with, and I would like 20 people to come to the performance that we're putting on. Those are all reasonable goals. And after you get those goals done, I want you to give me two more that are a little bit extreme, but are somewhat within reason. So for example, I want to meet the guy from Warner Brothers, or I want to get my promo to this place, or I want to make sure that this happens. Go ahead and make those five goals. That way, at least one of them is probably gonna come true, right? You need to give yourself a few options because if you go to one of these conferences, spend $1,000 and you have one goal, if that one goal doesn't happen, you're gonna be very upset about the whole experience and maybe you won't even take anything away even if it was a good conference. So instead, give yourself several goals. Maybe you wanna learn more about how to tour in a way that is good for your budget and you also wanna make sure that you meet a certain amount of panelists and the third thing is you just wanna to go to some networking events. Whatever it is, but set some goals so that no matter what happens, you can, sh you can see the progress as a result of going to these events. Because I can tell you right now that if you go with no plan, no budget, and no idea what it is that you're doing there, you're going to have three days or four days or five days that roll by in a blur. You're going to have a whole bunch of conversations that go nowhere, and then you're going to go home and you're going to ask yourself, why did I spend $1,000 or $2,000 or whatever it happens to be? So don't be that person. And as always, if you need help with your career or planning one of these events, or if you just have questions about what it's like to be in the music industry, that's why I'm here. My name is James, I host the Music Biz channel. I've been in music for over 15 years now, and I'm here pretty much every week with new content for you about the modern industry, how we can make it better, what we can learn from the stars, and what we can learn from the failures. So if you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button down below or visit us on YouTube at youtube.com slash musicbiz, because of course you could be watching this anywhere. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for your support. I'll be back real soon. And until then, take care of yourself because you deserve it.